But uh, my name is Mark Jensen. Um, I have, I'm working right now with Sanctuary Community Development Corporation um, at Sanctuary Covenant Church over in North Minneapolis. I've lived lived in the same house uh, right by North North High, North Commons Park for over 20 years. And um, so I think that's long enough to consider myself a Northsider. Even though I wasn't born there, um, that's my home. Been there a long, long time. Going on 25 years almost. I want to ask, uh, ask some of you guys just to give me a thought here in a second. So I want you to think about that while I open in prayer. But I want you to think about from maybe the way you've been raised or what you have experienced, how you like, what's the lens when you look at people that you'll be like, I think he's maybe a Christian. I think maybe she's a Christian. How do you begin to filter that and see maybe like where you think people are at? Hey, let's give these ladies a hand! Woo! Welcome, good morning. Yeah. Okay, have good. Oh, good. See, you had a good excuse. That's good. I'm glad. Thank you for serving. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to pray. I want you to think about that question really quick, and then we'll move ahead. Father God, we just thank you so much for this morning. God, I thank you uh, for ULA, for the leadership, for the vision, for the people who have got this, this program, this ministry rolling years ago, and, and for all the young people I see right now here that are, are participating, that are receiving, that are growing and being challenged. And God, even as the name implies, we know we're looking out on, on new young urban leaders that are, are going to be transforming our communities, are going to be making, making waves for the good and, and impacting people in positive ways. And so, God, we just pray for the, the waves of power that will be captured through these people in, um, in building our communities in fresh and new ways. In Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So somebody tell me, you know, I, I know you guys are over here, but, like, they have more gravity. So I'll come over here for a little bit. I'll fight gravity because they're, like, more, you know, they have more mass. I'll come down to this end for a little bit, too. Somebody tell me, how is it, you know? How is it when you look around, when you're at school, when you're somewhere, that you'd be like, man, I think maybe he's a Christian. Maybe she's a Christian. Yes? How they act towards other people. What are you looking for? Okay. If they're kind and stuff like that. Good. If they're not cussing every other word. Yeah. Okay. Good. Like what comes out of the mouth and bless the people. Yeah. When you talk about religion, they just come in and Okay, so when there's conversation about God, you can see that they are talking about Jesus, they have some folk understanding. Yes, back here in the back. Whether they follow the rules and follow the, whether they follow the rules and different things. Yeah, good. See, that's why they got the gravity. They answer all the questions. Anybody over here? What, what y'all think? I'm gonna stay over here. No, okay. Um, sometimes people wear Jesus shirts. Oh, they might like be advertising Jesus, be a billboard. Okay, yeah. You can look at different things like that. I, you know, and when I grew up, honestly, the church I was part of, and I think you guys had some really good answers, stuff like that. The church I was part of really focused on. You know, people are Christians if they don't swear, they don't go to parties, they don't get drunk, they're not talking about sex. And it was, and, and these are important things about the way we live and our morals. But anybody know what Jesus said specifically about how people will know we're his followers? Right up here in the front. That you love others. That you love other people. By this, Jesus said, will all men know that you are my disciples by your love one for another. I want you to say, by this. By this. By your love. Okay? And, and that's kind of hard to put a finger on sometimes. What love looks like. What do we do with that? I want you to just look at a passage. You don't have to go there with me. Just listen. You can look it up later. Or you can write this down. Look at it if you want to. Jeremiah 7. Uh, Jeremiah came at a time when the people had wandered a long ways away from what God told them to do. Now, the people were still going to church. The people were still going to the temple and offering the sacrifices doing all the things like that, so they looked good and religious. But they'd forgotten some important stuff. And this is what Jeremiah said, because Jeremiah came to warn them that, you know what, y'all need to get your stuff together, or it's going to all fall down really fast. 
Y'all are facing destruction. God's going to send some people in here to kick some butt and haul you away if you don't change your ways. So God said to him, this is the word that came to Jeremiah. Stand at the gate of the Lord's house, the temple, the church, we would call it, and proclaim this message. Hear the word of the Lord, all you people of Judah who come through these gates to worship the Lord. He's like, hey, everybody that's coming here to worship, listen to what I got to say. This is what the Lord God Almighty says. Reform. What's another word for reform? Repent. Change. Yeah, just reform. Like you're going to change it. Change it. Repent. Reform your ways. So they got to change something. And your actions. And I will let you keep living in this place. Man, people need to shut up their phones in the middle of just devotions. Man. Amen. Come on. Man, I, yeah, I we're, we're re reading the word even. And the phone goes up. Uh, reform your ways. And your actions. All right. So he says, reform your ways and actions. And I'll let you live. I'll let you stay here. Do not trust in deceptive words and say, and literally he says it three times, this is the temple of the Lord. The temple of the Lord. The temple of the Lord. He's like, don't think I'm going to let you just keep doing what you're doing if you're like, well, I go to church. This is a temple. I'm safe here. I'm doing what God wants me to do. I'm living the way God wants me to live. So you got to do more than just go to worship and you got to and, and say, well, I'm, I'm good because I'm in church. I'm worshiping. I'm doing this and that. If you really change your ways and actions, now listen to what he says. These are the things, the first things that come out of his mouth that you've got to change. So I, I would say if these are the first things he says that you've got to change, they must be pretty important. If you really change your ways and actions and deal with each other justly, kindly, fairly, appropriately, if you do not oppress the alien, who's the aliens? What does he mean by aliens? Huh? Aliens like come in little spaceships and land, you know? New Christians, maybe? Don't oppress the aliens. Who's an alien? Huh? <laughs> Immigrants. He's like, you all live in this country. An alien are people that aren't from your country that come and live there. All right? And so he's saying, deal with each other justly. Don't jack up the aliens. Don't jack up the immigrants that are living with you. Just because they're not from here, you've got to treat them fairly. Those are the first two things he mentions. If you're going to live in this place, if you're going to be my people, you've got to do. Treat other people fairly. And even if they're not part of your group. You can look at it that way. Even if they're outsiders, not part of your group, they're aliens, you got to treat them fairly. Don't oppress them. As well as, he goes on, the fatherless, the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place. And don't follow other gods to your own heart. Now, I just want to point that out really quick because sometimes we think following God is about all these external things we've got to do in and, and church and, and worship and looking religious and wearing Jesus shirts and our Jesus on our necklace and all this kind of stuff. And he's like, you know what? That verse we said that Jesus said, you know, by this will all men know you're my disciples, by how you love one another. Here where Jeremiah says, if you want to stay here, don't be just going to church saying you got your act together. It's about treating each other justly. Treating each other with fairness, with respect. It's about how we deal with the outsiders, the aliens, the people that aren't from here, the people that don't look like you maybe or talk like you. How do you deal with those people? Whoever those people are in your book. The widow, the fatherless, the people that, that ha are having the hardest time making it. How do you deal with those people? Do you treat them fairly? Final verse I want you to just think about really quick, and then we're going to wrap up because time is ticking, and y'all got a lot to do today. Matthew 23. Jesus comes and he's talking to the, the religious leaders of his time. You know? You guys all know the song, go like, whoa, right? Yeah. Well, Jesus is saying like, whoa. And go look at the word in, in Matthew 23. He says it over and over to these people. He's talking to the bishops, the priests, the, the apostolic fathers. He's talking to all the leaders of the church. 
at that time, who are the scribe, scribes and Pharisees, and he's like, like, whoa, you guys think that you're following me, you're doing the right thing? Whoa, I'm going to jump in here in the middle, but he says, woe to you, teachers of the law, Pharisees, hypocrites, you wear masks, you're, you're lying about who you are. You shut the kingdom of God in people's faces. You don't even let them come in. Then down here he says, you travel over the whole world. Woe to you. You travel all over to try to make one convert. And you get somebody to follow you. To follow God. And you make them twice the son of hell as you are. He's like, stop. Stop going around acting like you're doing all this good evangelism. Because you're missing the point. So then he comes down here and he says, woe. Woe. You give a tenth of your spices, your dill, your mint, cumin, but you've neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without forgetting the former. So he's telling these guys, you know what? You look all good and religious on the outside. You make sure you're always tithing, you're always in church. You, In fact, any of you ever seen a dill plant? You know what dill looks like? It's a little plant that grows in the garden. You make pickles out of it. Okay? And he's like, you sit outside your garden and say, one for God, nine for me. One for God, nine for me. And you separate your little dill leaves, and yet you don't understand justice, mercy, compassion to the people around you. And God's like, forget you. Talk to the hand. Get out of my face. I'm concerned about people who know how to practice Justice, mercy, compassion. So if you guys move forward as the leaders you are and the leaders you're going to become, know that God's calling you to call forth your generation to not be content with just a show of church. My generation, the generations before me, did an awful job. They like to look religious. They like to show up in church and wear the right clothes and talk right and do this and that. But their hearts, Jesus goes on to these Pharisees saying to them the same thing, were like dirty cups on the inside. On the outside, it looked all nice and clean. I mean, imagine if I had this cup and I held it up here and the outside looked really nice. You're like, you want a drink of that? And I put it down and it's got like some crusty old coffee and milk dried on the bottom of it. You know, and some crazy lady's lipstick still dried on the inside of it. <laughs> you all wouldn't want to drink out of that. He says, that's what your lives are like. On the outside, you look really nice, but inside, nasty. So let's ask God to move your hearts, to move you to become leaders that lead forth into justice. God's justice, mercy, God's mercy. What's God's mercy look like? It means that even when somebody doesn't deserve you to be nice to them, you be nice to them because that's how God treated you. All right? Even though I, I didn't deserve God to be nice to me, you don't deserve God being nice to you. He's still nice to you. He still forgives you. And he wants you to give that kind of love to the people around you. The kind of love, kindness, mercy he gives you, even if you're the inside or the outside of, of your group of people. Homeless, fatherless, widow, somebody just struggling with life, the alien, the person that, that's not from around here. So let's pray, and I know you got some other things to move into. Doctor, yes, I see that hand. You got to drop a line? I could do that. Please. All right. Huh? En español. Tal vez. Siento enojado. Cuando pienso de los malvados, los duros, con caras falsas que sienten nada bueno por mi gente de la raza. Ellos hablan mucho de cosas, ¿no entienden? Ellos no piensan de las familias, están ofendidos. Sin amor y compasión, ellos hablan de los ilegales. Pero ellos no saben, hay ley más allá de los legales. Hay un señor hay un ley más allá de este país de amor. Yo voy a traducir. I'll translate for you later, sis. This is your time to listen. And not understand. Hay un ley, un señor, más allá de un país de familia. Agua. 
amor y maíz. Yo sé, ellos no son mi familia de mi padre, pero estamos mis hermanos de un, otra madre y el padre del Señor. Right. I'll do another piece. All I said in that piece at the beginning is just, um, hey, I get angry. I get frustrated when people start talking smack about immigrants and people that they don't understand. And they're, they're offending families they don't even know about. They talk about people need to obey the law, but there's a law above the laws of this land about family and love and community and peace. And, um, and that piece, I got some more that goes on to that. It just talks about that. Um, the last slide just says, uh, I can't remember right now. I'll do another little short piece for you too. But, that, uh, but I think it's really important for us to think about God's heart. Where God's heart is about different issues. All right? Here's one that's uh, bilingual, a little bit. Listen. Listen. Learn. You know, too many times we're out talking. We're trying to prove our stuff, and we're not listening. Listen, listen, escuche, escuche, aprende. And in love, together, we can discern how to advocate for beloved community. Yeah, I'm a Caucasian, but my soul is brown. I don't wear this epidermis like some freaking crown. I can comprehend a bonics and flow in Espanol. Si quieres ser loco, I'm ready to roll. But my peeps, my gente, mi raza, mi hood. Forget all those haters say, we up to no good. It's time to pull off the hood and do what we should. 500 years of white lies, dang, we about out of tribes. The obsession, the oppression, the lack of confession. Will we never, never learn from, from our painful lessons? The truth of God abounds, but, but we treat it like dirt using some whack theology to, to band-aid all this hurt. It's a damn shame people think church is fake. Never would have happened if we lived for Jesus' sake. Listen, listen, learn, listen, listen, learn to that homeless mom with extra mouths to feed, to that gang banger who still can't read to that working family with, with no health care or that illegal alien who snuck in over there. Listen. Listen. Learn. All right. I just want to say something about that. That's a very appropriate use of the word damn. All right. It's a damn shame. Because if we were living the way God wanted us to live, people wouldn't be facing damnation. People would know the God we serve. And so it's a shame that causes people to be damned. So, take for it. All right, man, thanks a lot. Okay, let's pray. God, I thank you. I thank you so much for every person in this room. Your children, your daughters, your sons, that you have called, you have created, you have anointed, and that you've brought to this place. And God, I pray for the leaders that you just continue to give them the wisdom and the patience that they need to, to build and draw and, and uh, support what you're doing in this place. And God, as, as this time and this Leadership Institute wraps up, we know you're going to continue to move in these people in the things they're going to be doing over the next years, not just here, but on and on into the future. So God, use this moment, use this space, use this time of ULA to launch lives in new directions, like tsunamis that are going to tear up strongholds of oppression, strongholds of the enemy, and bring new life and new creation. In Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, thanks a lot. It's good being with you all. Thanks, Mark.